Hello, I'm Lucy Hawkins with BBC World News. Our top stories. 75 I offer my sincere and everlasting condolences. With those words, the Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe has commemorated the victims of Japan's attack on Pearl Harbor. His visit to the U.S. naval base follows President Obama's trip to Hiroshima, scene of another World War II attack earlier this year. It's an attempt by both countries to cement relations ahead of Donald Trump taking office in January. Our Japan correspondent Rupert Wingfield Hayes reports. A new row over doping by Russian athletes has broken out after officials appeared to admit to an institutional conspiracy. The claim was made in an interview in the New York Times with Anna Ansilovich, the acting head of Russia's anti-doping agency. Well, let's remind you of the scandal. It first came to light two years ago. Well, Russia's anti-doping agency says the words of its head who gave the interview were distorted, as our correspondent in Moscow, Oleg Boldyarev, explains. Well, said, this is surely just another massive blow to Russian sport, though. They just can't shrug off these accusations. They won't go away. Well, at this stage, this, this also may, this may be a question. This remains the same. The Turkish state news agency says Turkey and Russia have reached a deal for a national ceasefire in Syria. The truce would start at midnight local time. It doesn't, though, cover what the agency calls terror groups. Moscow says it can't yet comment. Well, let's take you to our correspondent, Lena Zinjab. So, Lena, quite significant then, uh, who is not involved in this ceasefire? What's being made, Lena, of what appears to be the closening relationship between Moscow and Ankara, given, you know, these two countries, once bitter enemies? Lena, thanks so much for joining us from Beirut. Let's update you now on some other news. Seven young refugees have been charged with attempt. Fellow actors and movie fans have been paying tribute to Carrie Fisher, who has died following a heart attack at the age of 60. She was best known as Princess Leia in the Star Wars series, but she also found success as a writer and a campaigner for mental health. Our entertainment correspondent, Lizo Mazimba, looks back now at her life and career. Carrie Fisher, who has died at the age of 60. Do stay with us here on BBC World News. Still to come... Argentina's former president, Cristina Fernandez de Kirchner, has been charged over corruption allegations. A judge has also frozen more than $600 million of her personal assets. Ms. Fernandez has previously denied any wrongdoing, as Caroline Davies now reports. This is BBC World News. I'm Lucy Hawkins. Our latest headlines. A municipal committee in Jerusalem has cancelled plans to vote on the construction of 500 new homes for Israelis in the east of the city. Now, apparently this is at the request of the Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu. Our Middle East correspondent Yolan Nell explains why the Prime Minister asked the committee to cancel the vote. Well, Washington has dismissed as ludicrous accusations by the Turkish president that U.S.-led forces have been supporting terrorist groups in Syria, including so-called Islamic State. Uh, we have some news to bring you that we are just getting in in the past few minutes uh, from uh, Germany, just looking into this news now from Berlin, that uh, prosecutors there say they have a 40-year-old Tunisian man that they have detained in connection with the Berlin truck attack. You'll remember uh, the truck attack on a Christmas market in central Berlin in which at least nine people were killed and many others were injured. Horrific scenes at that Christmas market and we are hearing that a 40-year-old Tunisian man has been detained in connection with the attack. 2016 has been a dramatic year for Turkey. On the edge of Europe, in the Middle East, on the border with Syria. Over the past few months, the country has suffered multiple terror attacks, an attempted coup, armed conflict in Kurdish areas, political instability, and just last week, the assassination of the Russian ambassador. Our Turkey correspondent Mark Lowen has covered all of this. This is his review of the year. The Turkish state news agency says Russia and Turkey have reached a deal for a nationwide ceasefire in Syria. The truce would start at midnight local time. It doesn't, though, cover what the agency calls terror groups. Moscow says it can't yet comment. But let's bring you uh, some reaction from Turkey and take you to our correspondent, Selim Gerrit, who is in Istanbul for us. Selim, what's the official line then from Turkey about the ceasefire? 
Australia's world-famous tourist attraction, Uluru, has reopened after it was hit by record rainfall on Monday. The landmark... Now, a heartwarming story of canine, canine loyalty from Ukraine, where a stray dog... Let's bring you more now on one of our main stories, the death of Carrie Fisher. There has been a massive reaction to the news across the world. Here are some of the messages from her friends and fans. So much reaction coming in to around the world, from around the world to the death of uh, Carrie Fisher, who has died at the age of 60. Let's just uh, update you a little bit more on the breaking news that we had about 20 minutes or so uh, from Germany, where police there have arrested a 40-year-old Tunisian man. This is in connection with the truck attack in Berlin on that Christmas market early this month. Prosecutors say he'd been in contact with Anas Amri, that's the 24-year-old Tunisian who drove the truck at high speed into the market, killing 12 people. Amri was shot dead in Milan last week by Italian police during a routine stop and search operation. And they said this man's number was saved in the cell phone of Anas Amri's telephone and that further indications uh, show that he may have been involved in the attack. Prosecutors had until Thursday evening to determine whether the case against the man holds up to the extent that they can seek a formal arrest warrant.